वसुदेवसुतम देव कंसचाणुरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु So we are studying the um So we are uh, we are studying the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita and uh there we were on the 20th 23rd verse 22nd has been done and we'll do the 23rd onwards so 24th verse which is coming is a very important verse um this section itself is very important it brings together the teachings of on the atman that you are existence consciousness bliss and on how to live life uh, an enlightened life in this world so it started this section started from the 18th verse very paradoxical language action and inaction uh, expressing the core teaching of vedanta that you are that and then it proceeded to show how to live in this world uh, based on that enlightenment and this section will come to an end Uh, with the 24th verse again a very important uh, verse um it these two verses are like bookends one side is the 18th verse and the other side is the 24th verse and in between all these teachings are there 18th verse very important 24th verse very important we're going to come to that <coughs> 23rd gata sangasya muktasya gyanavasthita chetasa ज्ञानाचरतःकर्मसमग्रंप्रबिलीयते knowledge that i am brahman not that we have read about it it's absolutely an indubitable fact ever shining effortlessly i am not the body i am not this little personality the mind uh, i am uh, unlimited existence consciousness bliss and i'm shining through this body and mind this knowledge is there in this mind um, so that kind of mind because of that mukta mukta means jeevan mukta enlightened free while living the mind is still there the body is still there your life is still there but this enlightenment shines through that so this enlightened free while living this is called mukta and such a mukta muktasya of this free person free while living gata sangasya complete detachment is there for everything that appears in this world just as the movie screen is not attached to any movie you can play a tragedy you can play a comedy you can play a good movie bad movie whatever the movie screen is not attached to it does not stick to it because it's not real similarly in that consciousness entirety of life plays out and you are not attached to a, a person or a thing or a job or a possession even for the most precious body and mind we are not attached uh, they are appearances uh, they uh, they were not there they appear and then they disappear we are fine with it such a person does this person act in the world does this, is this person involved in the world as we saw maybe or may not be it could be a monk who has absolutely pulled out of any kind of engagement with the world and remains absorbed in brahman that was one the other one which krishna prefers and is actually because he's teaching arjuna who is involved in the wo- uh, world can be a gyani who is a grihastha a, a householder in the midst of the world um with um, a spouse and children and and friends and and money and possessions and job and responsibilities all of that in the midst of all of that gata sangha uh, not attached how does this person act in the world especially the person who's engaged in the world such an enlightened being and yet still engaged with the body and mind still engaged in the world what is that attitude yagya ya acharata karma all work all activities are performed as if in a great yagya and that requires a little bit of explanation yagya is a word which we are familiar with uh, in uh, from it comes from ancient hinduism it is still there in uh, prevalent in hinduism it means the fire sacrifice yagya here refers to the vedic fire sacrifice that was the prototype of ritual 
what kind of ritual? The primary kind of ritual in ancient Hinduism was the fire sacrifice. So there will be an altar, a fire is lit and uh, um, offerings, often this ghee is poured into it uh, with the accompaniment of the chanting of Vedic uh, hymns. And the purpose was like all kinds of ritualistic religion, mass religion, the idea was whatever you want in life, um, you are given that by the performance of these rituals. And they were regarded as duties, nitya karma, as the mandatory duties of anybody following the Vedic religion. Now, what Krishna is going to do, so is Krishna saying here that after enlightenment, you just sit in front of a fire, <laughs> fire pit and keep pouring ghee into it? No. What he is saying here is, the kind of ritual that Arjuna is familiar with. So Arjuna is familiar with, for Arjuna, religion would mean yajna. That's how, the kind of religion that Arjuna is familiar with. Now Krishna is taking that prototype, that model, that paradigm and changing it completely. So now imagine the higher religion, spirituality as a ritual. So, yajnaya acharata karma, the entirety of life, the entire engagement with life, family, um, community, job, everything becomes yajna for this person. It's not a ritual when you light a fire and sit in front of it and pour um, uh, oblations, chant mantras. That's the ritual itself. Now, imagine the entirety of life itself as this yajna. So, that's what's going to happen. This person now sees the whole life as an appearance. The reality is Brahman, which he or she is. And now in that Brahman, this entire life appears. How do you, how do you relate to it as a yajna? As, a, um, you know, like a, a ritual you are performing it. Uh, so it is, so life uh, itself becomes yajna. Life itself becomes uh, a, a spiritual practice then. Not a practice to get anything, as an expression of one's enlightenment. Yajnaya acharata karma. Engaged in life in this way, doing karma in this way, one is not bound by the effects of karma. Our bondage, one way of understanding bondage in samsara is um, we do karma with some desire and we get the results of that. And that propagates, it becomes a wheel. Desire is there, we do karma with desire, then we get the results. If we do karma according to dharma, to morality, then the results will be good and we have some pleasant experiences. If we act immoral, in an immoral way, uh, prompted by fear or selfishness or desire, then the result will be pap or, uh, or uh, demerit and there will be unpleasant experiences. But in either case, dharma or adharma, papa or punya, we are still in samsara. It will keep on going, either a better kind of samsara or a worse kind of samsara. This person is not trapped. Samagram praviliyate. Here itself in this life, karma comes to an end. Um, so, now he will conclude this, this uh, section with the famous verse, 24th verse. This is one of the most well-known verses. Um, speci especially I think because it is chanted before food. So, this verse is immediately followed by food. So, you are warned. After this, you might feel hungry. In uh, many ashrams, some homes also. They chant this. 24th verse, 4th chapter. But a very, very important verse and one of my favorite verses. Not just because it's followed by food, but also because of its uh, philosophical significance. 24th verse. Brahma arpanam brahma havi Brahma gno brahma nahutam Brahma evate nagantabhyam Brahma karma samadhina the ladle is Brahman, the oblation is Brahman, it is offered by Brahman in the fire, which is Brahman, Brahman alone he attains who sees Brahman in action. Alright, we need to dwell on this. What I'll do is, I'll explain the general philosophical background of the verse and um, then get into a little technical discussion of uh, how this meaning emerges from this verse. It's a little technical uh, philosophy is involved here. And then um, I will also, I will not forget that it's related to food. So I will connect it later on to, to food also later on. All right. First, what is this verse and why is it so important? Here Krishna unequivocally talks about the highest Advaita. 
the ultimate teachings of Advaita, that everything is Brahman, including all beings, living, non-living, all actions, every experience is nothing other than Brahman. So the highest non-dual uh, teaching. Non-duality not only in Samadhi, but in actual day-to-day -day experience of life. When you're walking, talking, eating, working, uh, thinking, doing religious activities and uh, secular activities, everywhere non-duality is there. How? In the midst of so much duality, so much plurality, actually non-duality is maintained intact. How? So, in the second chapter, the essential teaching about Advaita Vedanta, about Vedanta was given, the teaching about Atman. That, that is the first step. The first step is to see that to challenge the idea that we are this body and mind. To challenge the idea that I am only this person, Sarva Priyananda. I am this man or woman. No. Uh, you are not the body, not the mind. Body and mind are there. But you are not that. You are not limited to that. You are the Atman. What is the Atman? Body I understand. Flesh and bone here. Mind I understand. Thoughts, feelings, likes, dislikes, memories, personality. That's the mind. What is Atman? If it's not body-mind, then what is it? It's awareness. It's consciousness. Chaitanyam. It's that, let's call it, isness awareness. Existence and awareness. The same thing. That existence awareness. How do I know that? For that, we have studied. We have been studying Vedanta for quite some time. So, we know various processes are there. Um, there is the Drig Drishya Viveka, the analysis of seer and the seen. Uh, there is the Pancha Kosha Viveka, the analysis of the five layers of the human personality. There is the Avasthatraya Viveka, the analysis of the three states of experience, waking, dreaming and deep sleep. All of them, they take you to the same conclusion. Not body, not mind. Uh, beyond body and mind, right here, within the body and mind, pervading it, but something apart from them, separate from them. Uh, body is changing continuously, mind is changing continuously. But I, the awareness, am not changing. All changes are in body and mind. Birth, childhood, middle age, old age, death, body. Disease, body. Happiness, desire, lack of fulfillment, mind. Misery, mind. Frustration, mind. Not me. I am the experiencer of all of that. I am the knower of all of that. I am the illuminer, revealer of all of those things. But I am apart from it. Consciousness does not have uh, old age. Consciousness is not fat or thin. Consciousness is not sick. Does not get COVID. Uh, consciousness is, does not get frustrated. Consciousness needs nothing. Consciousness never uh, is limited. That it needs something else to become fulfilled. No. Unlimited. Ever fulfilled. Never changing. This awareness. We were led to appreciate this. Second chapter, you are the Atman. You cannot be killed by the sword. You cannot be drowned by water. You cannot be dried up by wind. So and so forth. Uh, you can't be burned by fire. So and so forth. Krishna said that. Um, so this is the first step to realize that you are consciousness. Immediately a thought comes to us. Um, all right, I am consciousness. But here are so many people. So are there many consciousnesses? Just like in this body and mind, I understand that I am a consciousness not uh, as a part of the body and mind, but shining through this body and mind, pervading it, enabling it to function. When the body and mind are there, I enable this body and mind to function, just like electricity in, um, you know, in, in, in lights and fans and computers. But when the body is, dies, I am not dead. I still exist, except that I cannot function. I can't talk and walk and um, uh, you know, eat. If the body is not there, I cannot think or imagine or remember if the mind is not working. But I am still there. So that uh, immortal consciousness, I am. Correct. But so many bodies. So are there separate consciousnesses? And we have gone through this a number of times. We take it as a second big step. First step, I am not the body-mind, I am consciousness. Very important step. But that's not uh, Advaita. That's just the beginning of Advaita. Still, multiplicity is there. I am consciousness, but other than consciousness, there are so many things. What things? Mind, in senses, body, universe, 
billions of entities apart from consciousness. So it's not non-dualism. The multiplicity is there. Now the second stage will come when second step we take when we ask the question how many consciousnesses? So am I one consciousness and uh, father, mother, husband, son, daughter are they separate consciousnesses? Seems to be so. Advaita Vedanta makes the startling claim. These are Stunning claim that you are not the body and mind. First, second big claim. You are one consciousness. Not many consciousnesses. And we have gone through the arguments many times. What are the arguments? You, the Advaita Vedanta reverses this question. Why do you think there are many consciousnesses? You see, why do you think there are many bodies? Look at Swami, look at the pictures. There are so many separate bodies. You count them. Why do you think there are separate minds? Everybody has different thoughts, opinions, feelings. You ask them, you will get different answers. So clearly bodies and minds are different, no doubt about it. Why is consciousness different? So here there is an argument with uh, Sankhya philosophy which uh, holds that consciousnesses are different and all their arguments fall flat. I will not go into that. Ultimately Advaita Vedanta says, you cannot show by any means that consciousness is differentiated in beings, though it seems to be different. But there is no logical reason to suppose that it is different. Every logical reason you give to differentiate between consciousnesses, in every body separate consciousness, it falls flat. Um, so there is one consciousness in all bodies. Thirteen chapters Sri Krishna says, Khetragyam chapi maam vidhi sarva kshetreshu bharata. Thirteen chapter, Krishna will say to Arjuna, Know me alone to be the consciousness. You, do you feel consciousness, that you are conscious, conscious in that body? Arjuna will say yes. Like that there is consciousness in every body and mind. Yes. And that one consciousness shining through every body and mind, I am, Krishna says. I am the consciousness shining through every body and mind. Which, by the way, he is saying there, Tattva Masi, because he is saying, I, I, Krishna, Brahman, I am the consciousness in all bodies and minds. And you are the consciousness. So you and I are the one thing, are the same consciousness. Anyway, Advaita Vedanta says, one Atma. Sankhya says, many consciousnesses, many Purushas. Advaita Vedanta says one Purusha, one Atma, one Brahman, one consciousness in every body and mind. Just as, by the way, the biggest objection we have to this. You know what the objection is. I know what is in the mind. Uh, it, it is interesting. You must confront this objection. The objection to one consciousness in all bodies and minds is this. Tell me if I am right or wrong. We feel inside, as I know the happenings of this mind and body, if I am the consciousness in all of those minds and bodies, then I should know everything. But I know only this body and mind. I have got only one perspective through this body and mind. I am seeing through these eyes. I am smelling and tasting through these, this nose and these, this tongue. I am touching through these hands. I am thinking with this mind. I know the thoughts and personality of this person, but not all of you. So if I am one consciousness in all, I should know everything, right? I should, it should be revealed to me. Isn't this the doubt? What do you think? No? You don't have the doubt? Then you are extraordinary. <laughs> many, yeah, many of you are nodding. So, this doubt is there. He is saying it's one consciousness and maybe logically I cannot, logically I cannot argue with, but it does not feel like that. It does not feel that I am a consciousness in all bodies. You know why? It's like this. Suppose you are looking in a barber shop. Many mirrors are there. Yeah, haircut. So, many, uh, many mirrors are there. In each mirror is your reflection of your face. And if you say to one of those reflections, you alone are in all mirrors, the reflections will say that, no, I am only in this mirror, and that reflection is in that mirror, and that reflection is in that mirror, but I am not in all mirrors. True, the reflection belongs to the mirror. Each reflection is unique to the mirror. You are the one reflected in all mirrors. That's correct. Now, the one which says, I know the contents of this mind and body, I am aware of this mind and body, is the reflected consciousness. Is not you the pure consciousness? That's what's happening. That is uh, a crucial point. If you try to distinguish, it may be difficult. That is, that is one of the, the places where you can, if you make a breakthrough, it, is, it leads to the first step, the enlightenment. I am not body and mind. That will become clear. Right now, the one which objects, I know this mind, I know this person, it's the reflected consciousness in this mind. It is the reflect, reflected face 
in one mirror. Clearly the reflected face is not same in all mirrors. That's absolutely true. But you, the original face, you are the prototype for all reflections. Clearly. If you can make that jump from that reflected consciousness to you, the real consciousness, then the work is done. What work is done? Step one is accomplished. Once step one is accomplished, step two will come very easily. That I am in all minds and bodies. So after accomplishing step one, someone may ask, will I be able to know uh, the uh, contents of the minds of everybody? Again, you're speaking like a reflected consciousness. <laughs> all right. So the second big step is, Atma is one, one consciousness in all bodies and minds. Now, even now it's not non-duality because bodies and minds are different. Consciousness is one, but bodies and minds and the world, you know, external world is different. There are many, many bodies and many, many minds and many, many non-living things in the world. The last step which is accomplished here in this uh, Brahma Pranam Brahma Habi is this, that... Um, this world which appears to that one consciousness, external universe, from quasars to quarks, uh, bodies, um, men and women, and children and plants and animals and COVID and everything, from elephants to virus, all these bodies, they and minds, thoughts, feelings, personalities, all subtle, subtle is mind, mind level. And gross or physical is the level of the body and the universe. All of them are appearances in consciousness, are not apart from that one consciousness. Entire Jagat, world, Prapancha, the universe, is an appearance in consciousness, in you the Atman, and not accountably separate. It's like all the ornaments are in gold only. It's a strange way of speaking. We say gold is in the ornaments, clay is in the pot, but that's not really true. It's rather that the go ornaments are in gold. They are names and forms given to gold. Pot, jar, names and forms given to clay. Becomes even more clear when you think about water. The waves are in water. It's not that the water is in the waves. So, all this external universe is an appearance in consciousness. Not separate from consciousness has no existence apart from consciousness. This appearance nature of the universe, it shows that the universe is nothing but this consciousness, this one consciousness, which is the ground, the adhishthanam, rather the, the basis of this entire universe, this is called Brahman. Brahman literally means the vast, the infinite. What is it? It is existence. What is it? It is awareness and infinite existence awareness. That infinity of existence and awareness itself is called Ananda, bliss. And that thou art, you are that. This is the third step. Usually I speak about it in two steps. You realize you are the Atman apart from body and mind. And then second step, Atman is the only reality. It's Brahman. But it's easier to take it in three steps. You are not the body and mind. You are the Atman, step one. This was taught in second chapter. The immortal Atman, the unchanging Atman, ever effulgent Atman, beyond suffering and sorrow. Then next, you are the Atman in all beings. One consciousness in all beings. Ekam. That also was taught in the second chapter. That was taught. Then, that Atman alone is real. Everything else which you are seeing is not separate outside the Atman. It is in the Atman or not, and nothing but the Atman. The entire universe is an appearance in you, the Atman, just like movies are an appearance in the screen. They are nothing apart from the screen. The screen itself appears in the form of the movie. Just like dreams are appearances in the mind. They have no existence apart from the mind. So, this entire universe has no existence apart from the consciousness. Remember, I am not saying just like the dream, whatever is in the dream has nothing other than mind. In the same way, whatever is in the waking universe is nothing other than your mind. I am not saying that. That's an entirely different philosophy. That's called subjective idealism. Uh, in the Buddhist Vijnanavada philosophy was, is that. that uh, object is not different from the cognition. Uh, or uh, in Western philosophy, Bishop Berkeley um, and the subjective idealists. So that is different. That's not Advaita Vedanta. In fact, Shankaracharya... Um, 
painstakingly refutes that. This world is not a creation of your individual mind. Advaita never says that. But world, body and mind, they are all appearances in the consciousness which you are. There is a very big difference. Because mind and consciousness are not the same thing. Dream is a creator. Individual dream is a creation of your mind. Which we know. Individual dreams are the creation of our individual minds. But the world is not a creation of our individual mind. The world is an appearance in consciousness. Don't ask individual consciousness or not. No, no, there is no individual consciousness. Consciousness alone is the reality. This is third step. In third step alone, non-duality is achieved. Advaita. Because there is nothing apart from this Brahman. Whatever is experienced in the world is an appearance in Brahman and not apart from Brahman. Though it seems to be apart from Brahman. We seem to have no experience of the so-called Brahman and all that we see is the world. And here Advaita says the opposite. Whatever you see is an appearance and the reality is Brahman. Brahman itself is appearing in all these forms. Just like a rope is appearing as a snake. Now additionally, one more thing has been implied here. The word of karma, Brahma, karma, samadhi is important. So all activities are also Brahman. This is important because we are talking about how to bring this spirituality, this realization of non-duality into our day-to-day -day lives. So everything that we experience in day-to-day -day life, kar karma means every transaction in this world is uh, Brahman. Walking, talking, eating, working, uh, loving, hating, whatever is done in this world is actually Brahman, appears to be these things. That is the message of uh, this 24th verse. This verse is, no, one may just ask here that, um, wait a minute, something so abstract as consciousness, how can it appear as a solid world, rocks and trees? So Bill Conrad often says, he quotes uh, when uh, Samuel Johnson, when he was told about Bishop Berkeley's uh, philosophy that everything is the pro product of the mind, is a pro projection of the mind, the mind alone is the reality. So Samuel Johnson, apparently he said, I refute it thus. And he kicked a rock. He kicked a rock. He, by kicking it, he says, I refute it. See, a solid rock, I'm kicking it. How can it be the mind? Of course, that's not a correct refutation. You can kick a rock in your dream and that rock would be a product of your mind. But, but, um, consciousness. How can consciousness become a rock or a tree or something? Very good example is the dream example. You see people and um, um, rivers and sky and plants and rocks, you know, hard substance, soft substances. Everything is there in the dream. When you wake up, all of it is nothing but the mind. Correct? All of it is nothing but the mind. Mind alone is appearing in all these ways. Mind can appear exactly like that in consciousness. Consciousness alone is appearing in all, as, as the physical universe, no matter how hard or solid, as the mental universe. No matter how diverse, all of it is none other, than, none other than consciousness. You may say there, ah, but in dreams, the mind does not become, uh, you know, rocks or trees or people. It's just imagination. Exactly. That's what Advaita Vedanta is saying. Not that consciousness has become a universe. It appears as this universe. There is no real universe apart from consciousness. Not that a real universe emerges from consciousness and is not standing apart from it. No. It is still only consciousness. Now, this verse is directed towards Arjuna, who is, so this is meant for an enlightened person who is engaged in the world. That's why the verse has been put in such a way. So an enlightened person who is going to office and who is going to uh, maybe um, school, uh, taking care of a family and many responsibilities. So how does that happen? That's also mentioned in this verse. This verse says that all the actions are also Brahman. Everything involved in the action. Um, see, for example, the action which has been described there is a yajna. Now you have to imagine a Vedic time fire sacrifice. So there would be a fire which is lit. There would be a ladle, a wooden spoon, big wooden spoon. Uh, that is called arpana. By which... The havi, the, the ghee or the oblations, the offerings would be taken and offered into the fire. 
by whom by the priest and they would chant mantras so exactly like that so and he says that the wooden spoon the ghee which is offered the fire itself the one who is offering it all of them are nothing but brahman similarly every action that we do and all the factors of that action and the results of that action in sanskrit kriya karaka phalam kriya karaka phalam kriya means the action suppose you are driving then what is the kriya driving uh, what is the karaka all the factors associated with the driving what are the factors the car and the gps and the fuel and the road uh, and the person driving all of them are factors involved in the action of driving and the result you get to a destination kriya karaka phalam everything involved in action the action itself all the factors involved in the instruments the place and everything and finally the result of that action all of them are nothing but brahman that's what is being said in the midst of all activity not in samadhi not in nirvikalpa samadhi but in the midst of all activity which seems to be so dualistic i am different the car is different the road is different my destination is different that's why i am driving a car to my destination in the midst of all this dualistic activity um action as a beginning a middle and an end in the midst of all this dualistic activity the enlightened one sees one brahman only just as you would see one screen or at least notice or understand it's one screen only uh, in which the entire movie is being played out lot of activity going on in the movie in the movie lot of action maybe the cops are chasing the robbers lot of action shooting going on car chase but if you go and touch the screen nothing is going on there you know you don't have to touch the screen you know that nothing is going on so in fact the screen should not do anything if the screen also gets excited and starts chasing the robbers then the movie will be spoiled screen should stay still so that the movie can play can play screen screen should not take part in the movie similarly consciousness brahman which is existence consciousness that is the ground of all experience it makes all experience possible that's the um, attitude of the gyani enlightened one who is in um, in the world engaged in the world a grihastha does not have to withdraw from the world in the midst of all worldly activities brahma drishti non dual vision in the midst of dualistic activities that person sees everything is brahman brahmam i am jagat all the entire universe appears as brahman is brahman is known to that person therefore good and bad also in the movie hall comedy and tragedy in one sense they are the same to you because they are you know they are movie the only reality there is the screen and the sound and light satchidanand is the only reality and here good and bad are movies tragedy is also a movie comedy is also a movie the uniting factor there is that they are not real that's the saving grace so the gyani enlightened one who can be engaged in action in the office or like arjun in the battlefield has to have this vision of brahman in every activity why would this person act look at the difference between this gyani and the agyani the enlightened one and the unenlightened one the unenlightened one engages in action whether religious action or secular action can do a ritual like a vedic fire um, uh, yagya or a puja religious action or secular action can go to the office and work in a job in all of that the unenlightened person has certain objective to attain what is the objective i must earn money i must get my salary i must get a promotion i must buy uh, black friday i need money for buying things on black friday everybody knows today is black friday i have to buy things so this is an objective why in that case i will be happy if i do not buy i'll be unhappy guaranteed in both cases you'll be unhappy but anyway that's the samsara <laughs> so this is the objective of the agyani the unenlightened person in puja in rituals also the unenlightened person why do they do it it could be that i want something uh, let my child do well in examinations uh, let me go to heaven after death or even if i do not order that the disease be cured even if i do not have any specific desire let all things be all right with my samsara 
uh, things go well nothing wrong in all of this this is the this is the characteristic of a religious dharmika person a religious person a moral person ethical person absolutely all right but unenlightened does not realize the reality it still thinks i am this body and mind the enlightened person does the same activity but not for the desire for any kind of fulfillment because fulfillment is already there i am the infinite brahman what do i need so why does this person do activities loka sangraham for the welfare of others maybe just to set an example or maybe just this body and mind is supposed to do this work this is dharma let it do or it could be like some great action like vivekananda is engaged in you know taking care of so many people establishing schools hospitals welfare of the world so the not for one's own sake there is nothing to be gained for that enlightened person what does the infinite what does brahman have to gain what does the screen have to gain from the movie nothing it just gives the joy to everybody by playing the movie similarly the jnani enlightened person engages in all activities whatever is necessary while maintaining brahma drishti equal non dual vision at all moments effortlessly not that he is trying to think i must think it is all brahman i must think then unenlightened enlightened person effortlessly it is it knows do you have to maintain while watching a movie do you have to keep reminding yourself it's a movie it's a movie it's a screen it's a screen it's a movie it's a screen you will spoil the experience of the movie you keep doing that enjoy the movie you know that it's actually nothing can go wrong there it's just a movie so you can enjoy it the enlightened person also effortlessly realizes i am brahman all of this is brahman i and this are one and same reality no problem at all this is the uh, sub my substance of the message of this verse now what has happened here is um by the knowledge of brahman by realizing this the world has been falsified jagat mithyatva you see world is an appearance like a movie like a dream included in this world is karma all activities so all activities are also appearances like a movie all activities are done like the screen is doing nothing but tremendous activity can go on in a movie similarly i brahman do nothing but tremendous activity can go on in my life if necessary not that you have to be a workaholic that brahma gyan has to be workaholic not necessary can remain immersed in peaceful meditation also so all activities are fully compatible with complete non activity how this is where that insight comes from the 18th verse seeing inaction in the midst of all activity karmani akarma yah pashyet at the body mind level at the movie level lot of activities possible but at the screen at the screen level no activity is going on at the level of brahman atman i do not do anything the real i otherwise a lot of activities going on at the body mind level which is not real for me this seeing the unreality of of activity of action of karma seeing the unreality of karma through the realization of brahman brahma gyanena karma mithyatva drishti by realizing that i am brahman you see the falsity of karma this is called karma sanyasa this is called karma sanyasa i'll repeat karma sanyasa renunciation of action is seeing the falsity of karma which is consequent upon realizing i am brahman which is consequent upon realizing jagat mithyatva falsity of the world falsity of the world means falsity of karma uh, falsity of world how does it come by realizing i am brahman brahma satyatva implies jagat mithyatva jagat mithyatva is includes karma mithyatva that karma mithyatva mithyatva means falsity the falsity of karma is what is meant by karma sanyasa how is that accomplished by jnana by knowledge what am i trying to say here if you notice the name given to this chapter by shankara acharya jnana karma sanyasa yoga you see the name given to this this chapter is chapter 4 is this jnana karma sanyasa yoga chaturtha adhyaya this is what this chapter is known as how does this name come jnana by knowledge what knowledge aham brahmasmi and what is that kind of what is that brahman 
Brahma, Pranam, Brahmavi and so on. Everything is Brahman. Everything is not Brahman alone is. By that knowledge, what happens? World is falsified. World becomes an appearance. Karma is falsified. And that karma, falsification of karma alone is understood as karma sannyasa. Not the actual giving up of karma. Not the actual giving up of karma. So does an enlightened person give up karma or not? May, if he is a monk. May not. If he is someone like Krishna or like even a monk like Shankaracharya, like Vivekananda, may be engaged in tremendous activity. It is in this sense. It is a very profound statement. Jnana Karma Sannyasa Yoga. Yoga is a spiritual knowledge, spiritual practice or knowledge which results in the enlightenment, which results in the falsity of the world, which results in the falsity of karma, which is equivalent to giving up karma while actually doing karma with body and mind. Jnana Karma Sannyasa Yoga. If you look at this verse, it is nothing other than Brahma Satyam Jagat Mithya Jiva Brahma Ivanapad. Think about it. Everything is Brahman, Brahma Satyam. The world is an appearance, Jagat Mithya. Who are you? You are the you are Brahman which is beyond all action. While performing all action, you are still beyond action. Jiva Brahma Ivanapara. That central teaching of Advaita Vedanta, Brahman alone is real, the world is an appearance, you are none other than Brahman. This itself is the meaning of Brahmarpanam Brahmavi. Very profound verse. One more point, I am just reminded that wonderful exchange between Swami Vivekananda and, uh, and, uh, and uh, this, uh, Mary, um, uh, yes, Bill has got it right. Bill? Yeah, Bill? Mary Hale. Mary Hale, yes. So she wrote to Vivekananda saying, in his poems, in Vivekananda's poems it's there, saying that what you are saying, that uh, I understood that you have said all is God. And that's the meaning of Brahma Arpanam. Are you not saying everything is Brahman? And Vivekananda said, not at all. I never meant that. See, it is very important to understand Brahma Arpanam. Vivekananda says, I never said all is God. Such queer teaching, such strange teaching. How strange? This is what you are teaching, that all is God. The Gita itself says that. No. I said God only is, nothing else is. Brahmarpanam Brahmahavi means Brahman alone is. The ladle is not. The fire is not. The ghee which is offered is not. The priest is not. It is Brahman alone. The action of the puja, the yajna, that is not. It is not that in the movie, there is actually a cop, a cop, a car of the cop and the getaway car of the robber and the bank robbers are running away with cash and these are actually, they are chasing and there is a shooting. None of it is actual. Only actuality there is the screen. Not that there are real robbers and cops there, but it appears in that way. They are not in the same level. This is where the two level of truth, uh, the Vavaharika and Paramarthika. Absolute level, Paramarthika, Brahman only. Vavaharika level, all activities are going on. No problem. Vivarika level is the level of the dream, the level of the movie. All right. So this is the basic basic idea. Now I promised a little technical note here. See, it goes like this. Um, look at the words Brahmarpanam, Brahmahavi, Brahmagno. How do you interpret the words? Here is something called Badha Samanarikaranyam. Badha Saman Arikarnyam. Very big and fancy word, but it's important to understand. Very profound concept. You have to get a little bit of grammar in here. What he said is a sentence may be Vyadhikarana or Saman Adhikarana. What does it mean? Sentence has many words. Now the question is, do those words refer to different subjects, different entities? Or do all the words, many words, but they refer to the same entity? How does this matter? The dualist will say that, look, sentences refer, have many words. Everybody has to admit that. Yes, so. And the words, they are different. Different words refer to different entities. If you say yes, then the dualist will say, our case is proved. There are multiple entities. Language itself says there are multiple entities. Where is your one non-dual Brahman? Multiple words. Each word refers to multiple different entities. 
with different words referring to different entities, that means there are many entities. Where is non-duality? Simple. I mean, a very simple kind of argument. This is called Vyadhikarana. Vyadhikarana means uh, different uh, words referring, different words are referring to different entities. Words refer to entities. So, there is a, let me use the glasses to read a book. So, I am using glasses to read a book. I refers to me, Sarva Priyananda. Glasses refers to this. Book refers to this. Three, three words, three entities. Therefore, a reading, one more, action. Four words uh, referring to four entities. Where is non-duality then? Non-duality means that there is only one entity. So, language itself proves that non-duality is not possible. And the non-dual non teacher comes in and says, Advait and say, wait a minute. There are sentences in which there are many words, but they all refer to one entity. Such sentences are called Saman Adhikaranam. Samana means same. Adhikaranam means the ground or basis. The basis, that means the words are the basis for referring to same entity. How? Many of our Pranam Mantras. Vishwam, Vishnu, Vashatkara, Bhuta, Bhavdya, Bhavat, Prabhu. Thousand names of Vishnu. Vishwam, Vishnu, Vashatkara, Bhuta, Bhavdya, Bhavat, Prabhu. The thousand names of Vishnu. Vishnu Sahasranama. How many entities do they refer to? One entity. Vishnu only. Are they different names? Yes, different names. Sthapakaya cha dharmasya, sarva dharma swarupine. So many words. Whom do they refer to? One entity, Sri Ramakrishna. We started Vasudeva, Sutam Devam, Kamsa, uh, Kamsa Chanura, Mardanam, uh, for the Pranam Mantra in the Bhagavad Gita. So many words. They all refer to Krishna. So this, these such, such sentences are called Samanadhikarana. Many words referring to one entity. So it is possible for sentences to refer to one entity. Samanadhikarana sentences. Now our contention is non-dualist contention is when you say Brahmarpanam. Arpana means ladle. Now you know what 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 why, why are you suddenly talking about a ladle or a spoon? It's the Vedic ritual in which the wooden spoon was used to offer ghee. So Brahmarpanam. Two words are there, Brahma and Arpanam. What is the relationship? Are they two different things? Brahman is the creator of the ladle. Who will say that? Dualist. The ladle is a part of Brahman. Who will say that? Vishishtadvaita, qualified monist. What do we say? Samanadhikaranam. There is no relationship between the two words. They are one and the same thing. They refer to one and the same thing. Brahman only. Brahma Arpana. Brahma refers to Brahman. Arpana refers to Brahman. How? How is that possible? So far you are clear, there is a sentence, there is a type of sentence called Samanadhikarana, where all the words refer to one entity. And we are trying to prove, when you say Brahmarpanam, it means one entity, Brahman. How, how is this possible? There are four types of Samanadhikarana. There are many types, actually 16 types are there, but we will take four types. Four types of Samanadhikarana. This many words referring to one entity, four types can be possible. One is Aikya Samanadhikarana. One is, um, Aikya Samanadhikarana means identity Samanadhikarana. Then there is um, the um, Visheshya Visheshana Samanadhikarana. Adjectival Samanadhikarana. That is the second one, adjectival. One is identity, second is adjectival. Third is Upasana Samanadhikarana. Third one is for meditation. Fourth one is Badha Samanadhikarana. Badha means negation or correction. Negation uh, Samanadhikaranam. Four types. Identity, then uh, adjectival, then uh, for meditation, then uh, for correction or negation. Which one? We are aiming for the fourth one. What are these four? Very simple actually. I will give you the examples, you will immediately understand. The first one, identity. When two words are used, but they mean the same thing. So we will see this in Tattvamasi when we read about that Thou art. Uh, classic example is Soyam Devadatta. This is that Devadatta. That Devadatta whom Devadatta is a person. Devadatta whom I saw in Mumbai, whom I saw 20 years ago. Now I see that Devadatta in Manhattan uh, today in 2020. So that Devadatta who was young is now old. That Devadatta who had a lot of hair is now bald. So many differences. But 
this and that they refer to the same person this is called aikya samanadhikarana one they are one that is devadatta this is also devadatta the same they are not two devadattas so is isn't this brahmarpanam like that not at all brahman is not a wooden spoon wooden spoon is brahman no brahman is not a wooden spoon they are not one and the same thing all right second one adjectival what is adjectival classic example is nilotpalam blue flower or red flower or um, you can say uh, orange shirt orange shirt orange and shirt or red and flower they refer to the same entity flower is it refers to the flower and the orange refers to that orange flower only uh, so that flower itself it's the color of that flower so it is it is an adjective a property of that flower uh, orange should not need not be color only tall man uh, fast runner uh, uh, big house big tall fast color these are all properties and they belong to that object orange shirt orange is a property belongs to this shirt so brahmarpanam is it adjectival um re- remember how is this one then you think how can orange and a shirt be one how can big and house be one what it means is they both refer to the same entity one is a property one is the uh, entity itself subject uh, the, the the object itself so shirt and orange they both refer to this in that sense they are one because the orange cannot hang in the air without the shirt so they are referring to one entity so they are one in that sense is it like that is brahmarpanam wooden ladle a property of brahman not at all brahman has nothing to do with the wooden ladle uh, brahmahavi is ghee a property of brahman not not at all so it cannot be adjectival identity uh, adjectival uh, samanadhikaranam the third one upasana this shivalinga is shiva meditate on shivalinga as shiva you go there and imagine the shiva linga and meditate and worship it as shiva it's a stone symbol this is a stone symbol but you are for the purpose of a spiritual practice you are meditating on it as shiva you are identifying it in your mind this is shiva are you being asked to do that meditate on the ladle as brahman this ladle is brahman just think about it like that some people may think that's what we are being asked to do not at all not at all the third one is what we are trying to do third one is like uh, snake and rope what you think is the snake is actually rope what are we doing correct the error it is not a snake it's a rope and shankaracharya says when brahmarpanam brahman is the wooden ladle it is not a wooden ladle it is not arpanam it is brahman it is not a snake it is brahman it is not a snake it is a rope similarly it is not a wooden ladle it is brahman brahma havi it is not ghi havi it is brahman brahma agno it is not fire it is brahman how are you getting this meaning badha samanadhikaranam by correcting the error snake and rope are the same thing what does it mean does it mean that there is a snake and rope they are one and the same like devadatta no does it mean that the snake is a property of the rope no does it mean that you have to meditate on the rope as a snake no it what it means is it's not a snake it's a rope when you say arpana brahmarpana it's not an arpana it's brahman it can for every activity so the so fire it's not fire and not a snake rope it's not fire it is brahman brahma havi the brahman is it's not ghee not a snake it's a rope it's not ghee it is brahman similarly it is not a priest Uh, but it is brahman so it's a correction like not a snake it is a rope that is what is being told to us snake is an appearance rope is the reality wooden ladle is the appearance name form function but the reality is brahman existence awareness ghee is the appearance name form function but the reality is brahman existence awareness fire is the appearance name form function it's called fire looks like fire functions like fire but it's what is it made of it is uh, existence awareness brahman brahman is the reality it's not fire it's brahman this is the in form of enlightenment through badha badha samanadhikaranyam 
we are able to decode see it's cool, it's cool to say everything is god how is everything god uh, when you are working on a computer doing your uh, your assignment or your your dead meeting a deadline so if you say computer is brahman the uh, you are brahman and uh, the the deadline is brahman and your boss is brahman very difficult boss is brahman and the work that you are doing is brahman and the result of all of that is also brahman whether you will get a scolding or you get a promotion brahman how the only way it is not a snake it's a rope it's not a computer it's isness awareness it's not a boss it is brahman so boss already thinks that he is brahman but that's different but is brahman it is not the activity of typing it is brahman swami vivekananda's instruction to mary hail that no i never said all is god i said god only is all is not that is badha samanadhikaranam what did mary hail think aikya samanadhikaranam all is god there is all there is god and there one and the same thing or she thought upasana samanadhikaranam you are you are supposed to meditate try to feel all these things are god that is the samanadhikaranam of upasana third type no swami is denying all of that actually it is this shiva gyane jeeva seva the motto of the ramakrishna order from the advaitic perspective anand maharaj will give a, a different perspective is the vigyana vedanta perspective but i'm just saying from shankara's perspective shiva gyane jeeva seva jeeva is not shiva alone is that is the nature of the gyana then the seva that karma it becomes nothing other than shiva karma is not jeeva is not shiva alone is that is the meaning badha samanadhikaranam this is from classical advaita classical advaita would say that this is the meaning of brahmaarpanam brahmaadi technically now one more point and then i'll take a few questions i i remember i mentioned food so food has to be related how is it related to food here i am taking this from swami ram sukhdasti in hindi he has made six points how do you practice it while eating it's become a practice remember when it says brahma karma samadhi the one who sees brahman in all activities activities are not brahman alone is that's the knowledge such a person in all activities not just eating so it's in all activities eating is a good good prototype but it should it should go um, driving and working and talking and reading all of those acti- activities you can do this brahma arpanam brahma havi but specifically for eating six points you have mentioned we'll quickly go through it that by which you offer that hand or that spoon or fork uh, which you are offering food into your mouth that hand or the fork or spoon that is brahman in india people eat with their hands so the hand is brahman by which you are offering like the wooden ladle with which you are offering fire into the fire that um, hand with which you are offering food into the mouth that hand is brahman and the beauty of ram sukhdasti is he has given references from other parts of gita where krishna is actually saying those things gita 13.13 you can write down those who are taking down notes 13.13 13th verse 13th chapter sarvatah pani padam tat everywhere are the hands and feet of that lord that lord the hands are everywhere. which hands are we seeing hands everywhere like some hollywood special effect no our hands our hands the same consciousness acting through all these hands everywhere is the hand is my hand the hand of the lord um i'm reminded of maradona passed away the hand of god huh? those those who know football history all right second what you are eating that is brahman the rice and the dal and the bread and the, uh, what you are drinking all of that is brahman that is like the oblation being offered into the fire the food that you are offering inside that is brahman again he gives a reference gita chapter 9 16th verse 9.16 aham evajyam i alone am the offering krishna krishna says 16th verse of 9th chapter aham evajyam i alone am the offering god is the offering offering is the what food we are putting in the mouth third point the one who is eating is also brahman so gita 15th chapter 7th verse 15.7 mamai vamsha jeeva loke an aspect of mine has become a jeeva 
So the eater is also I am Brahman. I the eater am I am Brahman. Then the fire, uh, Agni. The fire is Brahman. So the fire in the stomach, the fire of hunger, fire of hunger is Br- Brahman. Krishna actually says that in fifteenth um, uh, chapter, fourteenth verse, fifteen point fourteen. Aham meva, aham vaishvanaro bhutva, vaishvanaro, the fire of hunger in the, uh, the digestive fire, in the stomachs of all living beings. I am, I God, I am Brahman, I am that. Then, number five, the activity of eating, that means offering the food to the fire of hunger, like you offer the ritualistic offerings to the fire in Yajna, that is also Brahman, the whole whole activity of eating is Brahman. How? Uh, in chapter 9, 16th verse, 9.16, Aham Hutam, I am the sacrificial offering, I am the activity of, uh, you know, Havan. And those who do the Brahmaivate in Agantavyam, those who see eating in this way, remember, we are specifically thinking of how to apply it to eating. Those who consider eating, those who are mindful of eating in this way, they attain to Brahman. Brahmaivate in Agantavyam, Brahma Karma Samadhina. The one who sees this non dual Brahman in all dualistic, apparently dualistic activities, attains Brahman. In eating, how? In Gita of chapter 4, 31st verse, 4.31. Krishna says, those who eat the prasad of an yajna, they attain to me. Very beautiful statement. Yajna shishtam rito bhujo yanti brahma sanatanam. Those who uh, eat the offerings after an yajna. Basically, the practice is, whatever we eat, whenever we eat anything, whatever we eat, mentally offer it to God and take it as prasad. When we offer food to God ritualistically and take get prasad from it, let every action of eating, whatever we eat, even snacks you are taking, a cup of coffee, mentally offer it to God and then, uh, then, take, then take it. And he says, the one who eats prasad, only prasad, yanti brahma sanatanam, they attain to Brahman, eternal Brahman. Remember, so this is a very beautiful practice to be done while eating, but remember this is not only for eating, it is for all activities. Brahmaatmanam brahmahavi, brahmaatno brahmanautam, Brahma Samadhina. We it is not a ladle, it is the non-dual Brahman, it is uh, not the offerings, it is non-dual Brahman, it's not a fire, it is the non-dual Brahman, it's not the one who is uh, the priest who is doing the activities, but it is the non-dual Brahman, the whole activity is itself Brahman, the one who in the midst of all active uh, Swami Vivekananda said, intense activity. In the midst of uh, intense activity, there is eternal calm. In the midst of all dualistic action appearing, your samsaric life is going on. You see non-dual Brahman. That one attains to Brahman. Attains to Brahman means already has realized Aham Brahmasmi. Okay. That was wonderful. Now let me see the <laughs> activity in the chat. So Brahman in the chat. The barbershop example is... And yes, um, I have seen this in one of the commentaries of Anandagiri more than a thousand years ago. He gives the example of many mirrors. Rick says that like seeing one light bulb in the house should know what's going on in all the electrical... Correct! Uh, Bill, that it is all reflected in consciousness, not proof that there is no existence apart from consciousness. Right, so this is the big thing. Our ordinary um, understanding is that things exist apart from myself. They exist and then I come to know them. I know them and I do not know them. When I know them, they also exist in a certain sense in my mind. But externally, apart from my mind, they exist. So this is, the, uh, I, this is, the, this is why it's difficult to identify existence and consciousness. Then you have to think about the dream example. Notice in the dream example, I am going about and looking at people in the park and there is a lake and the sky and the tree and I am thinking, what a beautiful, what a beautiful fall colors. Now notice what is happening. There is, it feels like there is a pe- there's something outside, fall colors and tree and people and lake, that's outside. I am thinking it's beautiful, it's inside, in, inside my mind. But if it's a dream and I wake up, I realize all that seemed outside, 
and all that seemed inside, they were all products of one mind only. And that, that which seemed outside and seemed to exist apart from me, they do not exist apart from me. Apart, apart from me, the dreamer's mind. Okay. This dream example should be clear. Now the objection will be, yeah, that's true in a dream. But how do we know that's true in the waking? That's obviously what separates dream from waking. See, what is true of mind and dream is true of consciousness and its objects. I've given you the sutra. Think well upon it. That which is true of mind and dream, Advaita insists that is true of awareness and its objects. Objects of awareness have no existence apart from that awareness. This is the whole thrust. And it's, it's not in the common sense thing, not at all. It's dramatically against common sense. Uh, that was the whole thrust of the Mandukya. The whole Mandukya was an effort to prove that to us. I've given you the examples of, so the, this is Bill Conrad's old uh, uh, question. Somebody told me, Swami, you can't solve it so fast. He has had this question before you were born. So, so his question is, that how do you say everything is in your mind? How do you say everything is in consciousness? And for, uh, he is not distinguishing between mind and consciousness. Suppose we say, Swami, we put a camera in this room and record it. And we go out of this room. We are not in this room. When we come back and we look at the film in the camera, the room will be there, everything will be there, and we are not there. So that proves that the room exists. That the experiment proves that the room exists apart from mind. See, it will not, that will not be true of a dream. When you wake up from the dream, everything is gone. Um, but here, when we left the room, we were not imagining the room, thinking about the room. The room still exists. Your film shows it. So my answer to it was, in your consciousness, you devise this experiment. In your consciousness or awareness, you put up the camera and this room. In your awareness, we all left the room. In your awareness, we have all come back into the room. In your awareness, you are check checking the camera and getting the proof of independent existence apart from awareness. It's still in your awareness. It, it's, not, it's a very simple truth, but it's not, not obvious. That awareness and existence are the same thing. What is the difference between Ishwara and Brahman? Vedansar class. <laughs> you are not attending Vedansar class. We, that's what we were discussing in Vedansar, right? Um, Satchidananda Brahman plus Maya, limited through Maya is Ishwara. So we are discussing that. The precise definitions are there. Rama is asking Swamiji, it also is in the knowing and contents of knowledge that are in the mind. The reflected consciousness only enables the knowing. Yes. Though we are the pure consciousness and since the knowing happens through the mind, minds being different in different individuals, aware of only the contents of the Absolutely, it's, it's right. That's right. Swamiji, just a follow-up question. Yes. So what is the difference between mind and reflected consciousness? Is the mind it's exact the difference between reflected face and mirror. You see, in Drigdrishya Viveka, this was clearly uh, discussed. Consciousness appearing in the Vritti is reflected consciousness. Chidabhasa. What is the difference between a reflected face and mirror? Notice one thing about a reflected face and mirror. They go together. Whenever there is a mirror, there will be a reflection of your face. And you cannot separate the reflection from the mirror. It belongs to the mirror. But it also belongs to you in the sense that it's your reflection. So consciousness appears in the mind... Is it, is it real consciousness? Is it the ultimate reality? No, it is a property of the mind. It is still something at the level of the mind. That's why it comes and goes. Hmm. So in a way, it is the mind itself. It is the mind itself. It's apart, it's yeah. not apart from the mind. No, it's not apart from the mind. The mind, of it, because of its nature of sattva, has the peculiar capacity of, call it, channelizing or reflecting or using consciousness. So how is that possible? If you ask... If mind and consciousness are entirely different, how is mind interacting with consciousness? This is an old question which foxed Descartes. This was very subtly discussed in Vedanta, even in Buddhism also. Vedanta has no problem with that. See, ultimately mind is also not separate from consciousness. Isn't it? 
mind, body, entire universe. What what did we just learn? Brahma, Pranam, Brahma, Havi. They are all appearances in consciousness. So it's not that two entities are interacting. Then you have to explain how consciousness is interacting with mind. That might be a question in first step, or even in the second step, which we did. Third step, this problem is resolved, because the mind, body, everything is an appearance in consciousness. Then, karma sandhya se, giving up karma phala. Ah, careful. Karma sanyasa se equals giving up karma phala. Karma sanyasa means renunciation of action. Here is the is the meaning is giving up the results of the action. selfish results of the action when we start actions with trying to get individual fulfillment that is a sign of an unenlightened mind those results are given up because we don't want it anymore but if the action is done for the welfare of others that is the whole purpose nothing else yes so it equals giving up the results of the action you mentioned krishna murti okay he's saying shekhar you mentioned a few weeks ago that this verse can be interpreted as non bhakti way to perform karma yoga yes so this uh, today is what i explained how non bhakti way i am the one consciousness in which the body mind are appearances and acting there is no question of any bhakti involved here the bhakti way would be god is in everything and i am serving god by my actions by i am converting my actions into puja into yagya that would be the bhakti way but this is not the bhakti way this is the highest advaita and it shows how our action at the level of body and mind action at the level of the movie is not opposed to non action at the level of the screen in fact it is the non activity of the screen which make, makes the activity in the movie possible it is the absolute nature of brahman which makes the relative world possible ultimately all our appearances um ultimately appearances are appearances Brahman, of course, is not an appearance, and so Brahman is not, not an is, is the reality. Shobha Ji says it makes sense now about the concept that there is only way of walking, eat, eating, working, but there is no walker. Um, there is only witnessing of the world and witnessing of the world and all the activities in it. Correct. There is no walker, eater, or worker in reality, but there is walking, eating, working. Now be careful. this is what the buddhists teach advaita vedanta would say there is no walking working eating talking and there is no walker eater talker um, worker uh, so that is not there it's a, it's as you said there is only witnessing of the world and all the activities in it you are awareness shining forth in all these ways no walker no talker no eater but walking talking eating is happening that's a peculiarly buddhist approach because they have the anatma approach they want to dissolve the individual self only rodrigo says is it correct to say that only turiya um realizes really realizes that the self realization is consciousness asserting itself yes but turiya need not realize anything uh, the realization happens at the level of the individual mind the individual mind which was in ignorance gets enlightened now see all this brahma arpanam brahma havi all this stuff it is true only of the enlightened person so it's not true of brahman in general brahman in general we are brahman in general and that brahman does not need enlightenment enlightenment is localized to the mind of the enlightened person that's why we all need to make efforts to get enlightenment in each of these minds ignorance is in this mind that is why this mind is creating samsara is caught in samsara we need to clear it out here my guru's enlightenment will not help me Yeah, Prabir Babu is saying is buddhi in Shankara's Nirvana, Shatakam intellect or reflected consciousness? No, it is inter intellect, and reflected consciousness is always there in that intellect. So Nirvana Shatakam Shankara Chari is not mentioning uh, reflected consciousness. He is just mentioning the four aspects of the antakkara: mano buddhi chitta hankara, um, mano buddhi hankara chitta ni naam. The first line. i am not the mind i am not the buddhi i am not the memory i am not the ego these are functions of the antakarana and in these functions especially in the buddhi consciousness is reflected that is not mentioned on bill's question sangeeta is asking uh, bill's question 
context one point is it okay to say that there is always somebody's rather than your awareness but it is still sangeeta there yes maharaj yes uh, what is the question uh, i was wondering uh, the fact that this question uh, you know keeps coming on a loop is it possible that uh, the reason we are not able to see it clearly is because when the camera is on and hmm. it's being recorded it means it's still in somebody's awareness even though it's not in my active awareness no so no you don't have to say that you don't have to say that see when you say it is not in my awareness that fact is also in your awareness that there is a camera somewhere which is not in awareness now it i come back into the room now i open up the camera now i see the film all of it is in your awareness see it is not in my awareness that's also a, a thought which is which is in your awareness right so that you have to think right. about it shweta is saying it is the world whole world not appearing in my own mind one who is experiencing it can you please explain eka jeeva vada a little or different from advaita vedanta it's not different from advaita vedanta but that's a very radical form of advaita vedanta i would not want to go into it but um there's going to be a discussion between me and professor um professor uh, thaneshwar timalsina on advaita vedanta and kashmiri shaivism our uh, swami uh, harinamang in san diego is organizing it now i don't know if ekaji babad will come up there but he is an expert on that professor stanishwar timalsena he has written books seeing is uh, reality uh, seeing and appearance um, he has written a book on ekaji babad he is in he is in san diego so i would uh, if you are interested in such things you can attend that uh, that con- that dialogue is happening in the middle of december sometime how do we on enlighten people apply 24 like 24 by 7 bill oh how do we apply the 24th verse how do we apply the 24th verse yes so th- we this gives us the perspective of the enlightened person we try to get enlightenment and also our application is that we know even when we do not feel it and we do not realize it we know that this is the underlying reality that it is satchidananda and i alone am am that reality try to understand that and try to get that feeling while engaged in action also also it explains many things that you don't have to actually withdraw from action uh, brahma karma every action is not uh, is brahman um, um so yes in activity and in no action also in both cases you can be remain centered in brahman but for us of course at our level we'll have to make the effort until it becomes a clear effortless realization i think krishna murti has a hand up uh, yes uh, swami ji uh, namaste um, so we we we've discussed or you you've taught in the past that uh, it objects that actually appear to us objects of the world they are brahman and that 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 makes sense i'm wondering how to understand uh, the the statement that the actions are also uh, brahman or mm-hmm. or you know even the vedic sentence uh, yagyo vai vishnu mm-hmm. uh, you know yagya the, the uh, selfless action performed is uh, vishnu so how how can how can we understand actions as brahman take a simple example um, two examples one is the dream example one is the movie example isn't it true that not only all the objects in your dream the people and the places and the sky and the earth and the river they are all your mind actually do actually if in the dream itself if you start digging into a road you will not find the mind if you take water from a lake you will not find the mind but they are all mind their appearances in mind similarly all activity suppose you are walking through the park or you are eating talking in your dream all the activities they are also the mind only what are they made up are they real people doing real actions no that's all imagined in the mind similarly all activity also must be in in consciousness and nothing other than consciousness in that sense this is i'm talking from an ultimate ultimate sense and from from an advaitic perspective all right then we have really run out of time today but good i was able to cover all the points that i wanted to talk about this is a very very wonderful verse and if you're feeling hungry it's time for uh, dinner 
पालन ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम तत्सत श्री राम कृष्णार्पणमस्तु